Right. <clears throat> Hello <laughs> and good morning. Welcome today to the live lesson. Very nice to see you here. Welcome today. And um, today is Thursday. It's what? It's the 8th of April. And looking forward to a very interesting class. Today, all about crime and punishment. I do apologise for being a little bit late. That was my crime today. So listen, welcome, it's great to see you. Um, if you've ever had those situations, and maybe you have, like you're about to start a, um, a, a Zoom call with your boss and your computer doesn't work, or you're about to, I don't know, start giving a lesson as a teacher and your lesson plan disappears, or in my case, my whole desktop just disappeared out of the blue, almost like there was a cyber crime happening. Who knows? Maybe. But listen, today, um, let me show you what we're going to be doing today. Some very exciting stuff today, right? Um, we're going to be on this topic today, which is all about crime. Fantastic. We're going to be looking at what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at if I can organize myself <laughs> vocabulary to talk about crime, maybe punishment as well. Um, we'll do a little bit on whoa on IELTS part three today. You may have noticed crime, right, is not such a big IELTS speaking topic. It's more of a writing topic. But you do sometimes get IELTS part three questions in speaking connected with crime, policing, prison, depending on the topic, right? You'll see today some questions that may come up. Um, although it's unusual to get IELTS part two on crime, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? Describe a criminal that you know. Ah, yes. <laughs> Probably not going to happen, right? It's such... It's a sensitive topic. That's not going to happen. But IELTS Part 3, there may be related questions. We're going to look at uh, some question practice, Part 3, who done it, indeed. We'll also be looking at idioms, of course. Always have a nice look at some idioms. For example, let me out. To keep your nose clean. How, what on earth does that mean? Keep your nose clean? Well, you'll be finding out very, very shortly. Of course, we'll do some sample answers. And um, that's where we'll finish up for today. That's what we're going to do today. OK, so all of those things, boom, 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 straight back to crime. OK, nice. So let me just say some quick hellos to some of you out there. <laughs> Jack from China. Hello, Jack. Nice to see you here. Um, Great. Faiz says you are so generous. I have IELTS on Saturday and use a lot of your lessons. Faiz, DBS, good luck on Saturday. Great. Um, hello from Pakistan. Kanwal, nice to see you. Francesco Colombo, hello. Hello, everybody. And Lexan, yes, finally made it to the live video. Glad that you're here. Danielle from Iran, Pooja, Annabelle from Riga. Brilliant. And uh, Mugda Kamalaka from India. Love from India. Love from Spain. Back to you and everybody. Thank you all of you for joining me today on this interesting topic of crime. Right. Um, as we begin, I just wanted to do a quick shout out. Right. Because I got um, I got a very, very nice comment from somebody. At first, I thought the name was Manila. Then I thought, no, of course not. Manila is the place. She says, love from Manila, Philippines. But this person said, it was a very nice comment. She said, hi, Keith. After multiple attempts in IELTS, finally, I've reached my desired speaking results. All of this can't happen without you and your videos. You and your videos. I love you so much. Oh, um, I can finally move forward with my American dream. All the love from Manila, Philippines. Manila, the city, I assume. But that's lovely. Thank you very much for that. Very, very uh, touching and really nice to know that all of this is helping you reach your dreams. Brilliant. Good. So today 
we're looking at crime, right? Crime. Now, crime is, I was going to say, is interesting. It's an interesting topic because I wonder why we become so obsessed with crime, right? We do, right? As, as a, as, as a, I was going to say, as a nation, I think around the world, people almost love crime, right? It is very, very weird. I mean, it goes back, right? Let me show you, for example. This goes back to the, the days of Sher Sherlock Holmes, right? Remember Sherlock Holmes? People love not only reading about Conan Doyle's characters, but also watching them, the TV series, right? We've had lots of the, the films. We've had all sorts of modern films on Sherlock Holmes. We've got Agatha Christie, I don't know if you know books like Death on the Nile, one of the greatest uh, female writers in the world, in my opinion, crime writers for sure. Um, and again, many of her books featuring mm, Miss Marple or Hercule Poirot have been made into films and into series. And more modern up to date, you may be into CSI, crime scene investigation, right? Why on earth do people love watching the crime scene and working out what's happening? This obsession goes, I mean, look at Netflix, right? Just take a quick look. In Netflix, all of these series that have popped up around crime, it's, it's amazing. We are obsessed with crime. And I think, hello, Sherlock, I think that what it is, is that we like, is two things, I think. We like puzzles, right? We like jigsaws and crosswords and sukudo, and we like to work things out. It's part of natural human nature. <laughs> natural human nature. Cross out the natural. It's part of human nature to want to solve a problem to find a solution, right? And we love to do that. And I think that has just been mixed with, I guess, pop modern <laughs> what? I don't know. Maybe this This also, we have this human nature about the dark side, right? Um, we like things which are a bit mysterious, a bit dark. Um, and maybe it's escapism. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the wanting to solve the problem and escapism, right? Jumping into a place where we cannot go. Because most of us, and unless you are a policeman or policewoman, most of us don't face crime every day. Um, and it's not part of our everyday life. But as an escapism, yes, we love it. We love to watch Shakespeare. We love to watch Sherlock Holmes. Um, and escape and solve the crime, solve the mystery. That's my take anyway. That's what I think. <laughs> what do you think, guys? <laughs> Stark as well. Well done, Stark, on your exam result. That's fantastic. Zakia talks about Lupin. Oh, I love Lupin. I was watching that the other day, the French one. Really nice, interesting um, thing. King of Kings? I do say Sokudo. Sokudo. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Right. Brilliant. Good. So... Lots of things going on. So I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? I know I'm going to begin, right? Um, well, some of you may know, but you may not know. Um, I've been away for a few days. I took a short break. Fortunately, here in Spain, in Cantabria, we can travel within the province, not outside. Um, and so me and my family took a couple of days away to go to the countryside. Um, and I thought it could be interesting to show you something that, that, well, it's a short video I made and it's all connected with crime, right? So let me, um, let me introduce you. <laughs> Bear with me just one moment. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Well, this week's live lesson is all about crime and punishment. And this is the perfect setting for crime and punishment. Let me show you the mountains. This is real Sherlock Holmes out in the countryside. Mist, smoke and mirrors. Who knows what's going on? We're out in this little kind of village 
hut where we're staying and uh, it's beautiful but it does remind me of Agatha Christie and um, some strange stories where things go bump in the middle of the night. Absolutely, things go bump in the middle of the night. Creepy. It's a bit like an Agatha Christie novel being out there in the countryside. It was raining and everything. Great. So listen, crime. Let's move away from um, horror films to crime. Um, and of course, our focus here is on the language, right? The English language. I'm going to begin. <clears throat> so creepy, says Tao Juin. OMG. Yeah, a little bit creepy, Tao, a little bit creepy, but it was a lot of fun despite that. <coughs> so let me begin having a look at some vocabulary, right? Let me bring you over here. <laughs> uh, funny comments. Right. Notes. Where are we? Oh, things are moving out of place. OK. Da -da. IELTS crime vocabulary. So crime. Let's begin with crime. And uh, let's notice, right, that crime as a noun is uncountable. Sorry. It's both, isn't it? It's countable and uncountable. Ah, let's start with countable, right? Of course it's countable. You can have a crime, two crimes, three crimes, a lot of crimes. Um, excuse me, to commit a crime, we normally say to commit rather than do. We don't normally say do. We would say to commit a crime, to commit a crime or to commit two crimes, maybe. OK, um, notice that the stress is on the mit. So the com, C-O-M, becomes k, to commit. Say that with me, to commit, to commit a crime to commit a crime. Nice. We talk about the crime rate. So the crime rate is how much crime there is, right? And that's where you get crime as an uncountable, right? So I'm going to put it up here. It can also be uncountable. How much, so not how many crimes, that's talking about the number counting one, two, three, four. If we're talking about the rate, how much crime there is, we talk about the crime rate. Crime rate is very high. Is the crime rate higher today than many years ago? We're going to discuss that. Different kinds of crime, OK? Um, we've got, haha, <laughs> actually, hmm, shall I show you these now? Different kinds of crimes. Let me show you, first of all, actually, this. We've got violent crimes. Da, da, da. So the, the violent crimes include things like rape, murder, kidnapping. So there is some element of violence, obviously, right? Um, we've got also petty crimes and Maybe cyber crimes. There are different kinds, but I guess these are the main ones we talk about, about violent crime. Petty crime is where there is no violence and it's less important. So petty just means not important, basically. Not important. Whoops. Important. Impotent. No, sorry. Brr. Not important. So petty crimes um, or, let's say, without violence in this case, right? So vandalism, vandalism where you maybe you're painting the wall of a house where you shouldn't be doing or where you're destroying the telephone box, some kind of damaging public property, right? That's vandalism. Damage public or private if it's not yours property okay um let's put these in a list that'll be make it easier we've got uh vandalism we've got shoplifting shoplifting is not where you lift a shop <laughs> you can't lift a shop 
but to lift from a shop, right? Because to lift is to steal. And that's colloquial, right? But it, it means to steal. To lift something is to steal something. As you can imagine, if you're in a shop, right? Um, if you're walking around a shop and you see something very nice that you like and you lift it, then you lift it and you that is shoplifting. So it's stealing from a shop. Shoplifting, we've also got trespassing, which is going on somebody else's property, going on private property. is trespassing, right? So these are kinds of um, petty crimes. And we've also got cyber crimes. Of course, cyber crimes are now becoming more and more common in this digital age. Okay. Now, there are lots of other kinds of crimes, and um, I'm going to share some with you, as, as some of you are, are putting in here. Let's talk about, let's add a few. We've got carjacking. So you've got hijacking, you've got carjacking. These would probably be violent crimes. Carjacking, hijacking, where you, hijacking is where you steal the aeroplane. Carjacking is where you steal the car with the person inside it, basically. What else have we got? Um, burglar. So burglar is the person but you've also then got um, burglary. Now, burglary, I'm not sure if that would be a petty crime. Burglary, but it's not normally violent. So burglary, that's the noun, where you break into a house, right? So you steal from a house. Burglary, nice. Um, we've got... Ar oh, not arson, arson. Yes, arson is a violent crime. That's where you burn something. If you burn a, a burn a building or you burn, well, very often with arson, when you burn a building, people are killed or, or injured. So yes, good. Um, yes, Dave had arson as well. Louisa had burglary. Great, good. Um, Kleptomania, is, is it a crime? Well, kind of, Android. Kleptomania is, is, is more of a sickness. It's an addiction to stealing. Um, so the outcome is a crime. The stealing is a crime. But kleptomania describes the, the psychological problem or the sickness somebody has, right? That they're addicted to stealing. Genocide, again, is, is, is a huge crime that's a crime a violent crime as well that's killing people on a massive scale um due to their obviously their different things their ethnicity their race color etc etc smugglers from Devine, smugglers yes yeah, so smuggling you could have um smuggling again i don't think that's a violent but i don't think it's petty Smuggling is very common in certain areas, right? It's where you it's where you take stuff um, through the border that you shouldn't do. So when you cross the border into a country and you take maybe animals that you shouldn't, or you take gold or money that you shouldn't, um, or things where, that you haven't paid tax on. Smuggling drugs is one of the most common ones. Smuggling drugs. And it means basically, if I understand rightly, to take across a border, take illegally across a border. So drug smuggling drugs into the country. Yes, smuggling is double G, if I remember rightly. Smugglers. Great. Thank you, Devin. Nice. Yeah, there's lots, lots more. Cyber scorping, kidnapping, says Tao. Um, phishing, says Louisa, which is a kind of a cyber crime. That's nice. Yes. Jaywalking. Interesting. In some countries, jaywalking is a crime. Not in every country, but in some countries, you cross the road <laughs> where there's no light, traffic light, and the police get you. 
Mugging is a violent crime. That's where you attack somebody and steal from them. Let's add that to violent crimes. Attacking and stealing, basically. Um, and then you've got all of the cyber crimes, account hacking. And actually, there's another kind of crime that is talked about a lot nowadays is white collar crime. Let me add that because I think that's become very popular. Popular is not the right word. You know what I mean, I think. <laughs> I hope. Um, white collar. Collar crime. Which is things like, just a moment, fraud, um, embezzlement. Um, it's maybe somebody working in a shop and stealing money from the cash till. Um, it could be a mechanic who's not paying his taxes. I don't know why I said a mechanic. Or a mechanic who steals things from your car when he's repairing it. <laughs> it does happen. Sorry, all respect to, to mechanics around the world. Um, but white collar crime. So it's as, you, as it's the name suggests, white collar suggests somebody working in an office. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with blue collar and white collar. Blue collar is, is a, a blue collar worker is somebody who works with their hands. So more a manual job. White collar, somebody who works in an office. So these in fact, did you know, I was looking up the other day, the number two biggest crime in the USA, right, number two was fraud, which is a white collar crime. Um, so where people, maybe a CEO or anybody in the organization takes money that is not theirs, right? They steal money, they put it in their bank account, um, or they give the contracts to their friends, cronyism. Um, all of these are white collar crimes. The most common one is fraud, probably. Let's say, e.g., fraud, embezzlement. That's kind of taking taking money that is not yours. Not limited to these, but these are the most popular examples. I would say, white collar crime or crimes. Let's say crimes that stay as accountable. OK, wow. OK, um, a lot of vocabulary there. There's a lot more. Yes, you've got breakings, pickpocketing, hacking, money heist <laughs> or obsession with um, TV programs. Right. OK, that's crime. Excellent. I'm going to move on and just have a quick look at the people. So we've looked at crime as a noun, but a criminal as a noun right, is the person who commits the crime, the crime. So that is the person. We can also talk about a wrongdoer, mm, somebody who does wrong, or a lawbreaker, somebody who breaks the law, right? A wrongdoer, a lawbreaker, a criminal. Just so practice these with me, a criminal, a wrongdoer, Get the stress on the first syllable, a wrongdoer, a lawbreaker. Yeah, not a lawbreaker. No, the stress goes on the first syllable, a lawbreaker. That's it. That's it. So cr a criminal is a noun, but also notice criminal can be an, the adjective, right? The same word becomes the adjective um, as in to commit a criminal act, to have a criminal record. Right. So a criminal act any is a nice collocation, any kind of bad thing, law breaking, a criminal record. So if you are a criminal, you have a criminal record. It means that the police in their I was going to say on the piece of paper nowadays in the database, the police have your name. Um, they have a photo. They have the mugshot. Right. The classic mugshots that you get in the uh, where you have the number and profile pool and so the when you commit a crime the police have your mugshot the photo the number your id your name you have a criminal record basically and if you have a criminal record it's very hard to get a job exactly very hard um so we've got criminal we've got them punishments and 
I guess whenever we talk about crime, we're also always going to talk about punishments. So that's how you try, well, how you try to stop the crime, but also how you punish the person for doing crime to make sure they don't do it again or to deter other people from doing a crime. To deter is to discourage people. So when we talk about punishments, we can talk about to go to jail or to prison, um, to serve a prison sentence. So we talk about a prison sentence, the sentence being the length of time. So a prison sentence might be one year, five years, 10 years, a life sentence. There's all kinds. So it's the period of time, basically. Period of time. So you may talk about, you know, he served a 10 year sentence. <clears throat> so that that is the length of time he was in prison or she served. She will. Let's change the tense. Practice our English. <laughs> she will serve a life sentence. You can add in prison if you like, just to make the context clear. But if it's clear what you're talking about, you probably don't have to add it. <clears throat> OK, so there's two examples. <clears throat> he served a 10 year sentence. She will serve a life sentence. We talk about to serve time. So to serve a sentence, to serve time. Um, he served time. He has served his time. She has served her time means that they have been to prison and the idea that they've had the punishment. So now they should be allowed the second chance to carry on with a normal life. <clears throat> right. To do community service, another kind of punishment in many countries, um, community service exists. And for many, the punishment is a deterrent against crime. Right. A deterrent. Difficult word. Deterrent. The stress is on the t deterrent against crime, which basically is a discouragement. OK, to make sure you don't do anything bad, don't break the law or such things as that. <clears throat> right. OK, let's see. <clears throat> Oh, lots of crimes. It's amazing just watching your comments. I didn't realise there were so many crimes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Don't forget blackmailing, says Emmy. Right, good. Right. Rehabilitation. Right. He he's sentenced. Yeah. Good. This is a good example, Steve. I'll just I'll put it up and just to make a small correction for everybody, because this is quite hard to use. Um, he is sentenced to 30 years in prison. Yeah, he is sentenced to 30 years in prison. Right. Um, so if we use sentence as a verb, in my example, it was a noun, but we can use it as a verb to sentence somebody to 30 years to 10 years in prison. Right. Brilliant. Thanks, Steve. That's great to show everybody all the prepositions that we need for this. OK, excellent. Very, very nice. Good. So lots there, lots and lots of vocabulary. Um, let me stop there just for a moment because that is an awful lot of vocabulary. And let me bring us back over here. Crime. <laughs> I love that picture. Um, and so also we've got, we've looked at vocabulary. What I'm going to do next, right, is look at IELTS part three. Bring us back to the IELTS test. Um, but before I do that, time for this. Badab she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. Badab she be do be do be bum bum bum. Great jingle. 
Okay, um, let me bring us back. <clears throat> By the way, what do you think of the uh, the painting? It's a different painting, right? Also done by my daughter, but this one is a little darker. It has a little bit more suspense and mystery and almost, I thought it matched the theme of crime quite well. A little bit of suspense in the class. Dun, dun, dun. Right, good. So IELTS speaking part three. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, um, crime is not very common in IELTS speaking. But of course, it's great for us anyway to learn the vocabulary to talk about crime. Um, it does appear in IELTS writing, but also in general conversations. It's quite useful to know. Mm. Um, so IELTS speaking part three. The key things to remember in IELTS speaking part three are develop your answers. Right. Try and keep talking. Be aware the examiner will cut you off. Right. They won't cut your head off. That would be a crime. They will cut you off as in they will interrupt you um, because that's the examiner's job. Right. They're thinking differently <clears throat> uh, to you. They're thinking in a different way. They're looking at different things. So <clears throat> don't be surprised if you are cut off. But that said, do keep talking um, because you want to show as much language as possible. Easier said than done, I know, but just be aware that you want to be developing your answers, developing, developing, developing. In particular, not just describing, but giving opinions, giving the reason why. I mean, justify, say why you think so. And examples, give lots of examples. Well, not lots, give at least one example, right? That's, that's great. But giving examples brings out richer language and it makes it easier to follow and easier to understand. There is a big danger in part three that you start talking and rambling and rambling and get very philosophical and abstract and the examiner's thinking, what? What are you talking about? And when you say, for example, bum, 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 it brings it down to earth and makes it very specific and then, ah, very easy to follow. So examples are really powerful in part three, right? So that said, part three, I'll speak in part three. Let me make this a slightly bit bigger for you. I'll just make a note there to remind you guys to develop your answer, right? Um, say, give reasons. Give opinions, explanations, all of that are great. Yeah. Um, and also examples, really important, right, to be giving examples. I think all of that, really important. I wonder if you have any other ideas. I'm sure you do. Here in Jane, you're welcome. Uh, this is interesting. Yesterday I wrote an essay, Task 2, about crime. Not all prisoners can become normal. Interesting. <laughs> Good. Okay, brilliant. So the question I'm going to look at first. Should young criminals be sent to prison for committing crimes? Now, this is going to be hard for you to answer in the chat box because you need to develop, but any phrases or ideas you can put in the chat box are great. Um, I think with this question, because we've got young criminals, right, <clears throat> there are useful synonyms here. Young criminals, young, we can talk about juvenile. So juvenile just comes from the Latin and means young. And delinquent is a criminal or a person who does bad things, right? Doesn't obey the rules, doesn't follow the law, right? So basically a young person who doesn't follow the rules, doesn't obey, it's a nice one, obey the law. 
So all of these are the same, right? Juvenile delinquents. Can you say that with me? Juvenile. It's a tough word. V. It's a, it's a strong V. Watch. Juv. Juvenile. No, you haven't got the V. v. And you need to have a voice sound here. V vile. Vile. Juvenile. Juvenile. Better. Juvenile. Delinquent. Watch the shape of the mouth. Delinquent. Inquent. See? Delinquent. Put them together. Juvenile delinquent. Mm. Great. Good. We can also talk about minors, generally. So that's young people. Um, or young offenders. Minors is just young people. Uh, often we talk about, in this context, maybe talk about teens, because often it's teenagers. Teens are teenagers. Um, or young offenders. Okay. Great. So that's a, a few things that you can... Uh, blah, 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 blah. A few synonyms you can use there. Let's have a look. So should young criminals be sent to prison? Um, okay. Let's have a look. I'll... Move us over here, Sergei says. Young people might commit a crime by accident and a sentence in prison may ruin their whole life. Nice language. Very, very nice language. By accident, without the an. It's a really good, um, what's the word? Phrase, right? To do something by accident. Good. Commit a crime by accident. Sergei, nice. Very, very nice. Um We've got photo, estilogu. Society has to do something to deterrent young to keep going so that doing community service is a great punishment. Um, society has to do something to deter. So, okay, deterrent is the noun. I think we need the verb to deter young people from doing something. Great. I think I've got there. Photo, thank you for this. Just a few corrections there. Um, society has to do something to deter, as a verb, deter young people from keeping going so that doing community service is a great punishment. Right, right. So community service can be a good punishment to deter. Lovely verb, deter. <laughs> deter young people or juveniles right great excellent nice <clears throat> negin says no so the question is should young criminals be sent to prison for committing crimes no because they would suffer huge mental distress good stress or distress both are good and it will not act as a deterrent nice act as a deterrent for them against committing a crime. Lovely. Very, very nice. Mm, great. Oh, this is interesting. Kalpana, I was reading about this the other day as well. Kalpana says, there is evidence that the frontal lobby of the brain, I'm not sure if it's called the frontal lobby, it's the frontal lobe, I think, isn't it? I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe of the brain will fully develop at the age of 24. Really? That late? So they may have lack of thinking ability and maturity. So we have to give them a chance. Give them a chance is a really nice expression. We need to give them a chance. Yes. Excellent. Very nice. Thank you, Kalpana. That is lovely. Very nice. So some things, let me just pick out a few of those expressions. They may commit a crime by accident. I love that, by accident. Let me just change the font. Bring this up. I'm going to keep the by accident because that's the bit I like. Yes. Um, lovely. Prison won't act 
as a deterrent. Fantastic. Act as a deterrent. Really nice language. Um, we've got community. We've got lots of colors. That's what, we, <laughs> that's what we've got. Why does it keep coming up in red? For goodness sake. Somebody's cyber hacking me. <laughs> community service um, serves as a deterrent. No, let's say serves as, act as. Community service deters, will deter. Um, juvenile delinquents. Practice my uh, delinquents. So I'll put that at, so deter, that's the one I want to get. Community service will deter. It's a nice use of deter as a verb there. Yeah, brilliant. Like it very, very much. Um, <laughs> this is interesting. Let me share this one with you. I like this one um, from Uji. Far be it from me, to tell you whether they should be sent or not. Lord knows I am, if the idea of prison at all. But I think, yes, because we need to ensure safety in our country, right? I mean, that's very interesting English. Far be it from me, from me, to tell you whether they should be sent to prison or not. That That's nice. I mean, you could say that, right? Far be it from me to tell you whether they should be sent to prison. Which is interesting because, it, in a way, that's true. The, the examiner doesn't care what you think. They don't care if they agree or disagree. They only care about your language. And that's nice language. Far be it from me to tell you whether they should go to prison. But I think. I'm not sure about your second question, your second sentence. Lord, no, I am if the idea of prison. I'm not clear about that but i like the last one i think yes because we need to ensure safety in our country ensure safety is nice yeah uji thank you very much for sharing that that's great so i'll add that we need to ensure safety in our society We need to ensure the safety. We need to ensure the safety of our citizens, I like. We need to ensure the safety of our citizens. Slightly nicer, slightly more natural. Oh, you can't see. Sorry. Yes, because we need. No, we don't need. We need. We need to ensure the safety of our citizens. Slightly more natural. That's nice. To ensure the safety of somebody. Yeah, brilliant. Very, very, very good. Um, let's take one more. Uh, let's have a look. I'll bring my thing back over. We've got more from Tao Hyun. It depends on the crime that they have committed. For instance, if they committed shoplifting, which is kind of petty crime. Oh, yeah, it was too big, wasn't it? It depends on the crime they have committed. For instance, if they... Nice instance, right? Examples, remember, we talked about. If they committed shoplifting, which is a kind of petty crime, good, and it isn't related violent, so putting them on probation is acceptable. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. It depends on the crime that they have committed. So be careful with the spelling, double M, double T. For instance, if they committed shoplifting, which is a kind of petty, which is a kind of petty crime, and it isn't related to violence, then putting them on probation is acceptable. Yeah, great, okay. Um, it's a kind of petty crime. It isn't related to violence. Now, putting on probation, you've been watching CSI, haven't you, Tao Yuen? All, all of these American um, crime TV series, police series. So to put on probation is when 
basically, let me check if I get this right. Um, to put on probation is when somebody, yeah, I'm not sure if that's right here because I think probation is when somebody has committed a crime, um, they're in jail, they're serving a sentence, and then they are released early or they're released on probation because probation is probar, probar, to try, right? It's to try. So it's to give them the opportunity to try to lead a normal life. So when they've been in prison and then they are let out on probation, on a test, on a trial, to, to carry on and see if they're okay. So that's pro on probation. Um, so to answer the question, should criminals be sent to prison for committing crimes? This is kind of after they've been to prison. But brilliant language, really nice. Thank you for sharing, Sal. That's really, really good. And it's good for us to share this, um, this language. Let me put it up here. So to put someone on probation um, is to release from prison early, basically, to try and lead a normal life. The word try being the most important, try from probar, to put somebody on probation. There's, there's lots of other vocabulary, but I don't think it's relevant here I'm about being on bail, releasing somebody on bail, which is where somebody gives a normally a financial guarantee to let that person um, be released on bail. And that's before they go to prison, after they've been charged. But let's not get too complicated. <laughs> right, brilliant. Good question. Let's move on um, from that question. Here's another question, right? And this one may come up. How can technology help tackle crime? Well, I was racking my brains about this and thinking, well, it depends. There's all kinds of technology, right? Um, the one thing that jumped to my mind um, is digital fingerprints and the ability of the police to collect fingerprints to have a database of fingerprints and then to use that analysis to identify a criminal. So I think that's one example, right, of how technology can help tackle crime. To tackle means to try and solve crime. Of course, it's impossible, but we can try and tackle crime. Um, so the use, let's see. We can use, well, let's say not we, the police can use technology to get uh, digital fingerprints and analyze them in a database. And so then, and this helps them, and this helps them identify criminals. There you go. It's all in red. Let's bring it up. The police can use technology to get digital fingerprints and then analyze them in a database to identify criminals. Yeah. Good. There are different ideas. I'm just going to take you through very briefly. I'm going to show you this website um, that that one of the things oh that's me <laughs> hello let me move you over guys one of the things i always do um when i get a question like i'm not sure about oh gosh i've got too many things on my screen bear with me it no longer it no longer looks so beautiful i know i realize that but uh, this is like seeing the behind the screens. <laughs> Five ways technology has changed our ability to solve crimes, right? Yes, what was I saying? One of the things I always do 
um, when I get an interesting question or somebody tells me a question they were asked in IELTS, if I'm short of ideas, I just go into Google and I copy or write the question in Google and look at the answers. Now, what's interesting is you often get answers from IELTS websites. Ignore those, really completely ignore those. Um, but look at the other websites and you'll often get websites about discussions, debates, the news, TV shows and talk, looking at that question. And that's where you get the really interesting stuff. So I found this one, right? Best value schools. Uh, five ways technology has changed our ability to solve crimes. And it's just it gave me an idea. It, it, it can give you ideas, if nothing else. I mean, look at this straight away, data mapping crime. And that apparently is where, can I make that bigger for you? I know it's less beautiful, but there you go. Data mapping crime. It's where they they take the data of different crimes happening in a geographical area and they analyze it to see what are the, the criminal hotspots. So which part of the city has what kind of crime and therefore they can better prepare to handle that. So if you know the city centre has a high rate of shoplifting, then you can have more CCTV security cameras in that area, for example. Um, so it's, it's mapping on a geographical area the kinds of crime and the crime rate. Smartphone tracking is something we can talk about. And this happened to me, smartphone tracking, right? So interesting. This was when I was, it was actually when we were out in Malaysia and my wife lost her phone. Um, we, it, I don't know if it was stolen. It was, it was left in a shop and then maybe it was stolen after. We went back to the shop and uh, they said it hadn't been seen. So we went to the police because of, there was some important information on the phone. Um, and the police got very excited about it. And they said, oh, right. And they got, they got out the computer and they started showing us how they can track phones and where information is going. Um, and you can track all sorts of stuff on smartphones. You can track location, identity, photos, all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of debate around it. Maybe it's not so good. Um, you know, is it invading privacy? It's debatable, but our focus is on the language. Um, so smartphone tracking, right, was really... It's a big thing. Social media, again, using social media to build up the picture of a person around a crime. Ah, oh, I'm not sure about that at all. But anyway, it's there. Biometrics, ah, that's the word. Biometrics is the um the fingerprint one, right? They use biometrics to identify the fingerprints. So this website, you can go, yes, I mean you can have a look, data ma mapping, smartphone tracking. It gives you a bit of information. So it gives you ideas and language. And I think that's what you're looking for, right? Is, is in your preparation to find ideas and language. So I can just put that into the chat box, I think, if you bear with me, if I can find my own live stream. And then um, what I'll do is at the end of the class today, of course, I make up all the lesson notes and I put those on my website and you can get all of the links um, through that there. There you go, buff. But I know it's going to go so fast you won't be able to see it. Things do move fast over here, don't they? Excellent. Good. Let me come back to you, see what you're saying. Some nice comments, actually. Great. So Emmy says, actually, once I've read an article says eyes says eye detection software and motion and sensor technology are being used to detect psychological and physical behavior to tell if people are telling the truth. Brilliant. Very, very nice. Lovely language, right? Eye detection software, motion and sensor technology. Nice. Very nice, Emmy. Yes. Um, 
Talking about social media, Harvinder says Facebook has several algorithms to prevent bullying and blackmailing someone on social media platforms. Great. Yes. Excellent. Nice. Did we get the phone back? No, no, it was gone. Totally gone. <clears throat> Yupinda says, well, it has certainly led to a reduction in crime rates. That's nice. A I'll just put in the A to a reduction in crime rates. For instance, we can share our location with family or friends if we feel unsafe. So mobile phones helping us. Absolutely. Very, very nice. <clears throat> Yes, good. Sanai says technology plays a crucial role when it comes to minimize crimes. For instance, social media platforms can tackle some crimes and sensitive sensitize, right? I think you mean sensitize is the verb. Yes. Well done. Nice. Let me just sensitize people about it. <clears throat> yeah, brilliant. I'm just going to do the, <laughs> I'm going to change to the uh, British spelling. I know you've got the American spelling. Pe so just notice technology plays a crucial role when it comes to minimizing, when it comes to something, when it comes to minimizing or doing, the ING, um, and sensitize people about it. So to make people aware of something, right? Yeah, excellent, good. Nice. Very nice answer. Thank you very much. Um, what else have we got? Did your wife recover her phone? <laughs> no, she didn't. We've got... Uh, yes, okay. Shakun who's added biometrics. She's added fingerprints, iris recognition and face recognition, yeah, also used. And I guess these are used by the CCTV cameras, right, um, to identify people and track people. Okay, nice. So let me just add, before we move on, a couple of things there. How can technology tackle crime? Um, what else have we got? Maybe by using CCTV cameras. We can deter people from committing crimes. Double M, double T. Commit. Double M, double T. <laughs> Great. Again, that's to deter people from committing, right? Just notice the grammar that you're using there. Police use face recognition. Um, what was the other one we had? We had the fa um, what was the other one you did? It was a really nice one. Uh, motion and sensor technology. There you go. Police use face recognition and motion and sensor technology. Motion and sensor technology to tackle certain crimes and then probably give an example, for example, blah, 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 blah. Yes. <clears throat> Algorithms is the other one, right? Algorithms on social media can be used to tackle bullying. Oops. Cyberbullying in particular, right? Not bullying. <laughs> bullying. To tackle cyberbullying. I like that word, to tackle. It's nice. It reminds me of rugby and football, but used metaphorically to tackle cyberbullying. Okay, some ideas there. Excellent, good. Right, now then, from that, it's time once again for that funny jingle. 
bad up she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. <laughs> I just realized it's too quiet. Bad up she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. Mm. Okay, right. I think we're going to look at one more. Um, and this is the one I'm going to have a quick look at <clears throat> before we move on. So one more question. And this, again, is a general question, but probably more around part three is this one. Is the crime rate nowadays lower than in the past? There's a lot of controversy. And again, what I did is I just pasted that and copied it into Google and found this article um, from The Conversation. Theconversation.com is a fantastic periodical. It's a great website to check out. It's conversations about current affairs and, and things in life, and it's really, really good. I think it's well worth checking out. Um, so if you have a chance, I think I would go and have a look at it. But there's this one here, The Conversation. It talks about half evidence crime rates are down, but is the world a less harmful place? Again, I'll just give you the link. You can go and have a look at it yourselves. It's a bit of a long read. So the conversation is quite, it's not for students. It's quite a, a higher level of English. So there's quite a lot of language there. But you can scan through it. Good for your reading practice. You can get some ideas from it, right? The conversation. Let me share that with you and then I'll come back. Again, I'll share, I'll put it in the chat box now and then I'll come back later to have a look at it. Okay, good. So let's come back to that question then. <clears throat> Is the crime rate lower than in the past? Hmm. A couple of expressions that I thought of here that I think are quite relevant, obviously. Um, it's not black and white. It's not easy to say, right? It's hard to say. It's not easy to say. It's not easy to say. It depends who you listen to. I mean, all of these are very simple, but very useful expressions to use, especially for this kind of question, because we don't have any data. We don't really have scientific data. And even if we do, it's always distorted, right? People love to manipulate statistics, um, especially politicians, to give and support the message they want to give. So, of course, they'll say crime rate is lower than ever before. Um, every politician is going to say that. So I think in your answer, you could, again, thinking about language, say, well, it's not black and white. Um, whereas some people, for example, politicians say that the crime rate is lower when I ask my granddad, um, he says that there's as much crime nowadays as there as there was 50 years ago, for example, right? It's hard to say. It depends who you listen to. So, guys, what do you think? Is the crime rate nowadays lower than in the past? What do you think? Give me a message down below. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's the wrong one, sorry. Hello from Vietnam. It was the person below you I wanted, Asim. So Asim says, hey, come back. The pandemic made a big impact in increasing crime rates, especially in my country. That's interesting. So the crime rates um, in that case are higher today than in the past. Uh, Harvinder says, I believe that the the crime rate, yep, yeah, just remember it's the, the crime rate. I believe that the crime rate has risen, has been risen, has risen to a great extent due to the advancement of technology as people, uh, I can't read it, as people with criminal, as people with criminal intent can easily reach out their victims. People with criminal intent. That's lovely. Very nice. Yes. They can reach their victims rather than reach out. Reach out is a very positive thing, right? When you reach out to somebody, you want to help them. 
So it's not reaching out to their victims, usually. It's to reach their victims, right? To, to grab their victims. Nice language, Harvinder. Very nice. Good. Um, Chinieri says, technology has made crime fighting more effective. More effective rather than effectively. Has made crime fighting more effective. Lovely. Good. Um, Shakun says, I'm in two minds on this. Lovely little filler. Nice. On the one hand, crime has significantly increased due to the advancement of technology, while on the other hand, technology is also helping us tackle the crimes. Right. Interesting. Good. Nice language. Very nice. Yes. I like that. I'm in two minds on this. Let me add that. I'm in two minds on this matter, or on this, or on this matter. Good, great. Thanks, Shakun. Let's see. Sajida. Great, next to his nice car. Great. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I find nowadays... Oh, nowadays. Nowadays, as one word. Nowadays. <laughs> I find nowadays crime rate... The, the crime rate. Hey, everybody's got that same thing. If you're talking in the sing in the singular, right, you must say the. If it's plural, you can say crime rates, but if it's singular, the. I find the crime rate, because it's one, has been increasing because world getting closer, so it's become easier for people. But it's also recently true criminals are caught easily. Well, yes, it has been increasing because the world is getting closer. Yes, the world is getting smaller and people are getting closer. Yes, but nice. Great. Very nice. Let's see what else have we got. Right. And Nodge says... I, it seems to me, yeah, I know you're all typing really fast and these are just typos, so I will just correct a bit. It seems to me that, <laughs> I think everybody's got that same mistake, right? The crime, oh, that crime, no, perfect, ignore me. It seems to me that crime is rising rapidly uh, compared to the past day, Compared to, right, great. Compared to the past days, as alongside an evolving technology has created more crime. Right, evolving technology has created more crime, good. For example, cybercrime that did not appear in the past, but today it is quite, uh, it is quite prevalent, maybe, we could say. It is quite, that did not appear in the past. Yeah, great. I've just added a word. I think that's what we mean, right? So cybercrime did not appear in the past, but today it's quite prevalent. Quite prevalent means a lot of it. There's quite a lot of it, yeah? Right, great. Very, very nice. Brilliant. Nice, Hanoj. Very, very nice. Good. Let me um, move back. I'm going to move on, actually, just keeping an eye on the time. Because um, I've realised, <laughs> as always, I'm going a bit slow. But not to worry. Um, let me turn us over here. Help, help, help. I've got lots going on. So IELTS Part 3. I'm back here. Um, we've had a look, right, at some questions. We've talked about three different questions there. Um, I'm going to move on and just have a quick look at some idioms to keep your nose clean. What's that all about, keeping your nose clean? We're about to find out. I'll share some idioms about crime. And if you've got any, please feel free to add them to the list. OK, good. Here we go. Let me move the comments over here. And idioms. 
to talk about crime. And as Mickey's coming off, this is a bit small. I'll see if I can make it a bit bigger. That's a little bit better. Yes. Can we see that? Idioms to talk about crime. First of all, um, to turn to a career of crime. And that's, I guess, it's idiomatic or metaphorical because literally you don't have a career in crime. It's not like a career as a teacher or career as a lawyer, but metaphorically it means a life of crime. So to turn to a career of crime is to begin a life of crime. For example, he fell in with some bad boys and turned to a career of crime. He fell in with means to make friends with, but normally negative. If you fall in with the bad boys or with a bad crowd, then you make friends, but in a negative way. Right, so that's really make friends, but in a negative way. So it's not a positive thing, right? Normally it's it's negative. Make friends, he fell in with some bad boys. Um, a very common one to be caught red-handed. Your hand is red. I don't know why we say this, but he was caught stealing money from the cash till. Um, he was caught red-handed stealing money from the cash till. So that is to be caught in the act. Um, to be caught in the act or to be caught doing something. Caught is a strange word, right? I mean, why do we spell it C-A-U-G-H-T? Really? I mean, the pronunciation is just or like court, like tennis court or basketball court. To be caught is exactly the same, but just very strange spelling. <clears throat> OK. <laughs> this is a nice comment. Yo, yo. Fall in with negative. What about fall in love with? Also negative. Well, it depends who. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you fall in love with. No, of course not. Fall in love with is positive, right? But fall in with somebody is negative. <laughs> like it, like it. Right, do time. To do time. Easy to remember. To do time is to spend time in prison. Why does that keep popping up? Right, spend time in prison. To do time. Um, he's doing time after he was caught for drunk driving. So he's doing time means he's in prison, right? Remember, we talked about the prison sentence is a, an amount of time, a period of time. So when you do your time or you do time, then you're spending time in prison. He's doing time after he was caught for drunk driving. And the opposite almost, to go straight, is when you've been leaving, leading, uh, Oh, how can I explain this? Let me switch. When you've been leading a life of crime, we often talk about being bent. <laughs> and bent is like that. It's curved, right? Like the bend in the road. If you're bent, then you're corrupt and you're committing crimes. Um, the opposite of being bent is to be go straight. And if you talk about going straight, it means that you follow the road. You follow the rules. You obey the law. Obey. Love that word. Obey. Ah, because it sounds like O'Hare. Keith O'Hare. Keith Obey. No. You obey the rules, then you go straight. Whereas if you're bent, <laughs> you're bent, then you're corrupt. It's not a good thing, right? We talked about the, um, the white-collar crime so a lot of corruption is white collar crimes. So don't be bent, be straight, go straight. And this is talking about crime. I know it has the sexual thing, but that's a different thing. To go straight, to go straight, not to be, but to go straight is to follow the rules, to obey the law, 
obey the law, let's say. To go straight, obey the law. After two years behind bars in prison, he has decided to go straight. And to keep your nose clean, <laughs> to keep your nose clean is exactly the same. It's to go straight. I'm going to take even the same example. To keep your nose clean, to obey the law. After two years behind bars, he has decided to keep his nose clean. And it's his his nose and not somebody else's right brilliant i'm just keeping an eye if anybody else has got any um has got any more idiomatic expressions there's one more here to blow the whistle to blow the whistle on somebody um you've probably heard about blowing the whistle so that's the whistle the referee in the football match blows the whistle but to blow the whistle on someone is to to say or to tell the police that they are that that person is corrupt or bad. Um, is committing a crime. A crime, please. So not necessarily the police, but you know somebody in authority. So you hear this, I mean, you can get this if, for example, you're working, imagine you're working in a company and you discover that somebody in your company is um, committing fraud and and you realise that, right, is a, a white collar crime and you decide to tell the police or one of your bosses in the company that that person is committing fraud. You blow the whistle on that person. Right, it's like the referee, red card, send them off. They lose their job, they go to prison. So to blow the whistle on someone, um, to tell them, you know, to tell somebody in authority that a crime is being committed. The whistleblower, there's a very famous film called The Whistleblower. You should go and watch it. It's very, very good. All connected with that. Okay. Yeah, nice, Nina, just to clarify, to go straight means to be a law-abiding citizen. Nice language. Yes. Yeah, great. To report a crime. Yeah, that's a better way to say. Sutao, yeah, to report a crime. Good. This is a nice one, a policy of zero tolerance. Um, often we get this in companies and in the police force that when it comes to for example, sexual harassment, there's a policy of zero tolerance. That means we do not accept it at all. It's not accepted. Policy of zero tolerance. Great. To be a bad egg. Yeah, it's a bit old fashioned. But yes, to be a bad person is a bad egg, uh, is a bad person, could be used for a criminal. Um, yes. To spill out the crime. I don't know. To spill out the crime. Mm, I'm not sure about that one, Rowena. <laughs> Being a bad egg, somebody else says. A whistleblower, yes. Blow the whistle is to alert or report a crime. That's a nice way of saying it, Faith. Thank you very much. Teeth, I need a translator. You'll have to help me. You'll have to translate your comment. After doing time for two years, he promised to go straight. Lovely. Nice. Brilliant. OK, um, that's nice. Those are some nice idioms for you there. All about crime. Excellent. It's time to move on. And what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to something slightly different. We're going to move on to... The following, <laughs> if you give me a second to find it. <laughs> it always takes me a second to load up, but let's do this next.
Dum, 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 dum. So um, I'm going to take one question, I think, given the time, just one question um, from you on this particular topic, talking about crime. And take a moment, just write down a question you've got in English, guys, please, um, obviously. And I will try and give you a model answer for that. So just take a minute. You can write down some, some comments. Write down a question, I should say. <clears throat> oh, dear. <laughs> Come on, Shakun. Have you ever committed a crime? I'm not going to answer that. I, I will answer that. The answer is no. It's not a good IELTS answer, is it? No. But I know somebody who has. No, 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 no. Other questions. Do you <laughs> describe a time you committed a crime by accident. Oh, dear. I walked into a bank one day and completely by accident, I found myself with a gun and I just took all the money by mistake. Terrible. Then I walked out. <laughs> Actually, I didn't commit a crime, but I got into trouble with the police when I was nine years old um, because I was I used to go to school by bus and the bus stop was right next to the um, police station. Right. So a group of us boys, we would play football just outside the police station um, and we played football with a small tennis ball waiting for the bus and we were kicking it around and somebody kicked the ball into the tree which was right next to the window of the police station and so me being a bit stupid climbed up the tree and started shaking the tree trying to get the ball out and of course a couple of policemen came outside they said oi what are you doing up that tree this is police property leave that tree alone come down and i was like oh caught red-handed trying to get the ball out of the tree so i got the ball came down and they they just told me off they said listen sonny <laughs> sonny stop playing with the tree you're not allowed to climb up the tree sorry sir yes sir sir my bus is here i have to go to school bye bye sir <laughs> and i went to school that was um i think the only time i've ever got into trouble with the police anyway that's not serious is it that's not an ielts answer okay hey let's see why do young people commit crimes how crimes have changed nowadays interesting what if a law disappeared out of the blue? Yes. Are you involved in criminal activity? No, you're not going to be asked that. Capital punishment tolerated. Again, because is, is capital punishment, the death penalty is all great language. But I think because it's such a sensitive topic, you will not be asked these kind of questions because um, it is a very sensitive topic. So I'm going to choose something slightly less sensitive. How to prevent the you young people keeping his nose clean? Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, I'm going to go with this one, which is um, there's one about young people, but I'm going to choose one from Chang, who says, "Why do some people commit a crime?" Right, which is quite general. Why do some people commit a crime? Okay, and again, that's your typical part three question, right? Why do some people blah 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 blah? Why do some people do that? Uh, so that's going to be quite quite common. Where are we? Let's go up here and can I bring my screen over <laughs> and just let me paste and copy that question. Can I bring it up? Can I change the font? Yes, I can. Okay. Good question. Right. Thank you, Trang. So why do some people commit a crime? Mm. Um, it's a difficult question and it's hard to say because um, it really does depend on the circumstances. I think on the one hand, um, some people live in very difficult circumstances and they are brought up maybe in very poor families 
and find it very, very difficult to get by um, day by day. And so in some ways they turn to crime out of necessity because they need food to eat and they need to put you know food on the table and clothes to live and so out of necessity they may um, start committing crimes in order maybe starting with petty crimes but then sometimes it's a slippery path and it leads to more violent crimes possibly on the other hand maybe just young people have just fallen in with the wrong crowd and they're hanging around with some other bad boys or girls and they end up following them and they get caught in some kind of a crime again probably a petty crime but then if they go to prison it can get worse and it can escalate to them becoming a hardened criminal that's my answer right yes tricky question right why do some people commit a crime very tricky question okay excellent now, I'm going to stop there. That's my one sample answer. Um, it's tricky, a tricky question and a, tri a tricky topic. Thank you, Trang. <laughs> Thank you for that. It is very hard. Um, I think because of the sensitivity of the topic at times. But anyway, I think, I hope here you've got lots of ideas of language, vocabulary, some idioms you can use. Um, and some of the ideas you can also transfer over into the, the writing as well as the speaking, right? Fantastic. Now, here's the bad news. My, You've asked me if I've committed a crime. <clears throat> the crime I've committed today <clears throat> is that I have not had time to prepare a kahoot. Whoa, what? The people are up in arms. It's a crime. Throw him to prison. Yeah, as I said, I've been away. Um, I've taken a short break the last few days. I got back last night. Uh, <clears throat> so I've had time to prepare the class. But listen, I've not had time to do a Kahoot. I am so sorry. There is no Kahoot today. Don't worry. I'm weaning you off Kahoot very slowly. <laughs> so that's it. Let's just have a quick review then of where we are and what we've seen today. We've been looking at crime, right? We've talked about, well, different kinds of crime. We've been looking at the vocabulary, talking about violent crimes. We've talked about petty crimes, cyber crimes, um, white collar crimes as well, um, and uh, uh, different varieties. We've talked about criminals and committing crimes, the collocations that go with that. We have had a focus on IELTS speaking part three, where we've been emphasizing the need to develop your answers, give your opinions, give reasons why, explain uh, and give examples. It really helps if you can give examples in part three. And we've looked at a few different questions, right? We've been looking at why young people or juvenile delinquents or minors, young offenders commit crimes? Um, should they be sent to prison? Is it a good deterrent? We've talked about questions of technology and how that has helped um, reduce the crime rate, remember, um, possibly, and also whether the, the crime rates have actually gone down or have they increased in recent years? Um, it's not easy to say, right? It depends who you ask. So we've looked at quite a few questions there and also idioms, keeping your nose clean. Please do keep your noses clean <laughs> as you go through your life. Um, it's so much better. And then we finished up on a sample answer and, and that was it. The sample answer was the last one. There was no review because I didn't get to do it. So I do apologize for that. Don't worry, there will be next time. Um, do remember that you can find all of the information and the, the lesson notes from today on my website. I will just show you over here if I can. Um, if you go to the Keith Speaking Academy, go to the free live lessons, you'll be able to go there and find the latest live lesson, which was last time about the news, but also all the previous live lessons in alphabetical order. You can just download them. 
um, or you can just study the lesson directly on the internet um, and you can find them for all the most well all of the recent topics and we've done an awful lot how to talk about animals for example so it's all there right get the lesson notes there's normally a video so you can do a mock test all sorts of stuff and the vocabulary so that is on the website the IELTS sorry the Keith Speaking Academy I'll just put it up there for you Keith Speaking Academy if you're interested in Facebook come and come and join us on the Facebook group lots of interesting stuff happening Keith's mastermind community it's all about IELTS speaking right so it's just about speaking but people sharing their ideas um, their comments their successes their f not their failures but where they're trying and trying to get better and helping each other get better through all the stuff we do there so do come and join us if you're if you like Facebook um, it's a good place to come excellent let me wind up if you're on if you're on of course you're on YouTube some of you are some of you're on Facebook if you're on YouTube do subscribe turn on notifications um, to find out all about my next videos coming up there is a video coming out on Saturday and Saturday's video is all about accent accent in IELTS speaking British accent American accent Indian accent Singapore accent French accent it's all about accent in IELTS speaking it's going to be interesting I think you're going to like it so do um, watch out for that on Saturday it's not live it's recorded I usually publish around midday more or less so that'll be on Saturday listen I'm going to finish up here today um, thank you so much for joining me it's great to be with you today to talk about crime um, it's not a funny topic but the language can be quite fun. So listen, thank you. Take care, everybody. See you soon. All the best now. Bye-bye.